so we just came back from Macna in Milwaukee. We're up there for five days. Got a pretty early start this morning at 3.45 a.m. in Milwaukee and took two planes back home. So it was a long day getting back, but we had a lot of fun up there. So I came back, there's some questions that we had from people concerning the video last week of the beautiful 6,000 we have running in Atlanta now for about three and a half years. So we had a question about the size of that particular aquarium. It's 16 feet long in the middle. It is six and a half feet in the middle. So about 80 inches in the middle of the bow. So it has a bow front on that 16 foot long length. The ends are about five feet. Uh, so we had probably a 16 inch belly on that huge acrylic panel that is four and a quarter inches thick. It's a really thick panel. The water elevation's 84 inches. So overall, seven feet of water. However, the aquarium top to bottom is eight foot finished. That came into the house in three pieces. You saw that on the video. And it is really what I would say one of the most spectacular, certainly the most spectacular private residence 6,000 reef aquarium in North America. More questions about the uh, 6,000. Hold for a second. So on the 6,000, in that video, we talked about an area I made down to the bottom for stingrays. I put some um, keystone rock uh, silicone to the floor and made kind of a barrier with a, a big sand flat underneath a ledge area. At one time, an interesting clients like things like stingrays, sometimes they want eels and lobsters and sharks. We typically will not do eels, lobsters and shark. They really don't fit into a reef aquarium environment. They get too big, they eat things at night. So we try to avoid those, but stingrays will do once in a while. Uh, at one time I did have a blue spotted stingray in there for about a year and he, it was so hard because it's so deep, that particular aquarium to spot feed that stingray. The issue with stingrays is they need to eat, you need to feed them, and if you're not there every day, every other day, with an extended stick with a little tongue on it or some sort of a clothespin clip or something to be able to put the food in front of the stingray, literally they, they can starve to death if they're not eating enough. And um, sometimes also, of course, angels, or if you had uh, trigger fish, which can be pretty uh, aggressive, they would pick on the back of the stingray. But that stingray only made it for a year and we really decided that it's a challenge because of the depth of the aquarium to not put another stingray back into that one. The more recent one, the huge 2,000 gallon pond that we have on Miami Beach, that particular pond, the client would love to see a stingray in that shallow water environment. So you're standing from above looking down into it and certainly a stingray is possible in there because you have easy access to feed the stingray. We're feeding them in that pond only in one position all the way onto the far right side. We do have an auto feeder there and the stingrays that we're gonna put in there will be the yellow stingrays that we typically receive from the Keys and those yellow stingrays are about this big, about eight inches, maybe 10 inches max in diameter. I've seen them my entire life diving in the Florida Keys and off Miami Beach. They really don't get much longer than 5, 14, 15 inches. And those are really easier ones to keep. Today we have a special treat for our client, yellow stingrays. A spotted yellow stingray, they can camouflage to their environment and surroundings. Right now they're already acclimated and feeding on frozen foods. What is called a monster mix with some silver sides, some invertebrate food, as well as krill and minnows. So we made it easy for our customer. We've got a feeding stick, which has a pointy stick at the end. You can skewer your silver side or minnow, entice your stingray to come to the surface by smell. Once it's hovering at the surface, you'll then drop it down right in front of its face to where it can slurp it down. So the question around that pond was related to the light. It's a two-story entry with a spiral staircase going up in the middle. The windows are, are literally two stories tall, so they've gotta be a solid 18 or 19 feet high. It's a big curtain wall of low E glass, which is typical in homes in South Florida to help hold back the heat coming through and block 
the UVA or UVB coming into the room. So yes, certainly the sunlight coming in from the southern exposure of that space gives a tremendous amount of illumination on the bottom of the pond, which is only 20 inches of water. So as Sanjay would say, a photon is a photon is a photon. So you're still getting light. And it's important to recognize. Uh, we haven't tested the PAR that I'm aware of as of yet, but we need to do that in midday light when there's plenty of light underneath the pond. But we also put in three Radeon Gen 5s over the pond, kind of equidistant spaced out because you want to see it at night. And when you put the blues on, you really get to see these great glowing colors of the corals that we're putting in there, which is more geared towards soft corals. The mangroves in there now are absorbing about a gallon per pot weekly. They're literally sucking up a gallon. So I think they're gonna grow really fast because of the natural sunlight. But again, they're planted in freshwater pots until they potentially overgrow in the next few years and then they'll have crop roots growing into the salt water. Uh, that pond is just gonna be spectacular. Really, we went over the, the larger aspect of large reef aquariums, it's exciting to help people learn. Of course, I'm still learning too. You never end up learning everything. And there's just so many things to take into consideration with a large aquarium. To get significant results takes a lot of effort again and again and again, because it really never stops. Once the aquarium is going and thriving and just growing like a weed with all these corals, it needs the attention, it needs the care, and it needs the personalized uh, time to manage the health of a thriving reef aquarium.